Mark, thank you for having me here. You're welcome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm from Honduras and I'm 27 years old and I've been living all my life here. Yeah. I was um, born in a small village in Santa Barbara. Uh, come and get to know people because we don't just have natural beauty, but our people, we are very um, unique. We are, uh, so some of the things that you might not want to do when you come here is don't make yourself look wealthy. Uh, don't uh, be walking around here late at night by yourself, using your iPhone or your iWatch. Watch. Always travel with someone who knows where to go, what to do, where not to go. I, I can't sugarcoat it. Mm -hmm. But although we are a dangerous place, we know where to go. And that's Another something thing that you might want to know when you come here. It's always keep cash. If someone robs you, please don't hesitate to give them your phone or to give them anything that they want, that any electronic or anything that, that they are trying to rob you, it's worth than your life. So just give them whatever they want. And I, I mean, we have a lot of cases where people are trying not to give them, not to give the thief what they are trying to steal. And I mean, they end up dead. So you don't want to, you don't, I mean, you don't want to come here and, and have a fight with, with a, a thief, especially here in, in Latin America, right? That they're not going to think twice to kill you. I think those are like the top two tips that I would have for them. And I would say that the other million that I would have will, will be on the book where people would travel to. And our natural beauties here, I would say like Roatan, Utila, which are our, our beaches. We have like coral reefs. People go there and they scuba dive. And those beaches are really worldwide recognized as one of the natural beauties here in Honduras that we have. As I would say those two, then we have like Copan Rinas. Copan Rinas is a really nice place if you want to just and, and relax. I would say Copan Rinas is a must go. I, I, I always go there. If I want to relax and just keep it out of the city, I will go there. I would recommend like Pico Bonito. Pico Bonito is really nice. It's very tropical. I love Pico Bonito. And my fifth place would be Comayagua. So it's each really of the places that I'm mentioning you. Yeah, I mean, you need to really, really know where you're going. So if you want to know those details, read the book. Two hidden gems within your country, places that are not really well known, that are still safe to go to. Things, small villages that I'm mentioning you. I would say like Copan Airbnbs. They're really nice. Este Ucigalpa as well. You can see like um, another hidden gem. I would say the beaches. The beaches always have like hidden gems under a gem. So you might want to travel there. What beaches specifically? Uh, I would say Rotan and Utila. Those are like the top two. Okay, awesome. And when it comes to cuisine, cultural cuisine, what's your favorite dish or one or two dishes that you recommend? That's a hard one. Uh, the first one, and it's uh, like the um, the typical one is like la valia. La valia is our, like our number one dish. It, it's like a flour tortilla with uh, frijoles, and we have eggs, scrambled eggs, and sour cream, which for us is um, mantequilla, uh, and, and like carne asada. Carne asada is super good. One or two hikes that you recommend? Mountains are Roselake, which is the highest peak. That would be like a two-day tour. We have Rio Platano, which that's the one that I did. Rio Platano, it takes about two to four days. And this one is pretty cool. Because, uh, this one is the one that I love the most. It takes you through a, kind of like a rainforest. So you go in between the mountain. And it's, it's Tela Tela. It's a, a small beach here. Uh, well, here, obviously, in Honduras, it's uh, it's smaller than Roatan and Utila, the one that I'm mentioning you. So you go to there, and for about 40 minutes outside of Tela, there's another place which is called uh, Echo Jungle. Uh, that's a hotel, kind of like a small Airbnb. Um, it's really nice. You have, like, the city view, and I see even people going uh, late at night. So that's a small hike and I mean I think that people who travel here to the country might want to go there. Um, where I live outside the city it's called San Manuel Cortez and I mean you can hike there it's just mountains. So Honduras is filled with mountains so, so that's, that's kind of like a suggestion that I've made in the book like if you want to just save your money and just invest it in, a, in an activity or you want to eat more or do whatever you want to do with your money here just uh Book an Airbnb, it's pretty Sweet. safe. And what's the difference between the dialect of Spanish in Honduras and the other Latin American countries? Um, I would say wording. Wording and some people say accent. Mm -hmm. okay. But I mean, if I hear like, let's say like a Salvador or Nicaragua, Guatemala, which are like my brothers or sisters, 
uh, I, I I would understand them. Like some words are very different. Even here in Honduras, like we have like Teusigalpa, which is very close to San Pedro Sula. We're about four hours, three hours and a half away. We have different words. Like, like if I wanted to say snowball, which for me is nieve, uh, there's a different term for them. So when I go to Teusigalpa and I ask for a snowball and I, and I, for me it's nieve, like they they i mean they will be like questioning me like hey well so what what do you want because for them it's another thing yeah. so i mean even here in the country wording is very different small museums uh recently there's one that opened in tela tela i mentioned it before is a it's a small beach that we have uh it's a natural beachy museum that you can you can see like tela's history and how it all started uh, a few corals that they have and we have one here in San Pedro Sula that is a historical one we you could see like the first car a uh, kind of like the first machine so that would be like two small museums that are pretty large we have like oh we have like the kids museum it's, it's really interactive like so and I know it's very cheap to go I mean and anyone can go the way I, to know is that everything that I do is uh, because I love my parents I do it I do it all because of them of course to make them proud. That's something that I would love. I would love the world to know that because I want to honor them and it's because of them. So, yeah. Then you awesome. want the world to know about Easy Mark Publishing and the mission we're currently on. Personally, so, something that touched me is that you want to do something about my country. And I think that most, pe most people or most companies don't, especially because, and it surprised me a lot. I think I mentioned you this because of the bad reputation that we have. So you guys um, picking Honduras, it really touched me a lot. The opportunity to know why I come here. And you guys have given Honduras the opportunity to get more people to come and know our place and more people to get to know our people. And our people are like the best people of the world. We love people. We love to know people. We love to share with people. We are very sweet people. And we we embrace culture, multicultural people. So when we see like a somebody that's not from our country attracts us, we want to talk to them and just engage them with our with our with our culture. So I think that's kind of like what attracts us the most. I mean, we see a lot of missionaries here, and most missionaries come back. So I know that there's a huge potential here in Honduras, especially if a, a person comes. If and it doesn't have to do with mission trips, right? If it, if you come like. For, for a mission or if you come just because you want to know the country, I I would guarantee you're going to come back because I've seen it before. Uh, awesome. um, a friend of uh, Republica Dominicana, mm -hmm. I was telling her about you guys and I was like, hey, so I met uh, this publisher and he's like writing these books from everywhere. And I've seen that he's only uh, taking like women. And he, she was like, oh, my God. And I mean, is this something about a movement of, of women? And I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm not sure if he has like another group of men. So I was telling her, like, I think that he's like kind of like empowering women or something like that. Like this were like my thoughts. Right. So to hear this from you, it's it's I mean, it's great. It's a great movement.